Yeah, shalom. Welcome back, everybody. We're in a Sefer Yoshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 2. And in this chapter opens up with Joshua sending out two spies to spy out the land of Eretz Israel, and especially Jericho. Set the boundaries to see exactly what's going on with the people over there. Now, a couple of things, interesting things that come out of over here is that, first of all, we wonder why Joshua would follow in the footsteps of Moshe by sending out spies to see the land. When, in the case of Moshe, when he sent out the, the 12 spies, that worked out. That was just terrible. That was a catastrophe for the Jewish people. And that cost us 40 years to wander in the desert while that entire generation had to be cut off and destroyed. The truth is, is that the spies that Joshua sends out, in this case there's only two spies, he knew ahead of time that they would be uh, uh, trustworthy spies and bring back a favorable report. Because one of the spies uh, the rabbis teach us was none other than Kaleb ben Yufune, who was already been to Eretz Israel with the 12 spies. He was one of the 12 spies. And now once again, Yoshua is sending him to uh, to see the land. The other spy was none other than Pinchas the Kohen. Pinchas the Kohen, as we recall, was a zealot for God, and he certainly would be trustworthy in this mission that Yoshua is sending him out to. Now another interesting thing was over here that the, the, the goal over here, the mission, is to go to Jericho. Why Jericho? Out of all the places in Eretz Israel, why is Yeshua sending them to Jericho? Our rabbis teach us that Jericho is the mafteach to Eretz Israel, is the key to Eretz Israel. Just like you have a home, in order to protect the home, you have a door. That door is Jericho, so to speak, to the home, to Eretz Israel. Once you enter into the door, the whole house is in your hands. So too, once you enter into Jericho, our rabbis teach us, that is the key to conquering the land of Eretz Israel, and that's why it was the first place that the Jewish people went to fight the battles uh, for the land of Eretz Israel. That's a very important point, which of course has ramifications to our day too. They go out into the land, these two spies over here, and of course they go, as the, as the text tells us, uh, to Rachav, the prostitute, a very well-known prostitute at the time who uh, the rabbis teach us that uh, all the kings, the messengers, Everybody would be found in her inn over there, and uh, all the information could be found exactly what was going on at that particular time. Now, an interesting side note about Rachav is that we find over here that in spite of her uh, uh, bad occupation of being a, a madame of, uh, of this particular location, she was able to turn her life around. And when Chazal tells us over here, that not only did she turn her life around, but in the end she actually married Yoshua ben Nun, the leader of the Jewish people at the time, which is unbelievable. Chazal actually goes and tells us that she would be the forerunner of some eight prophets later on, including Jeremiah the prophet. So the lesson here is very, very clear, that in spite of the fact that wherever a person is, is in his life, and whatever baggage the person is carrying around from former experiences, etc., there is always hope. As long as the candle is burning, there is still hope for a person to turn everything around. And that's exactly what Rachav does with herself and with her life. She comes to the realization that uh, the God of this world is the God of Israel, and uh, there is no running away from that. And she comes to the realization, she searches for truth, she finds the truth, she converts to Judaism when the Jewish people enter, and she changes her entire life. A beautiful, tremendous lesson for all of us. No matter how far back we are, we can always turn things around. There's always hope for everybody. Now another very important lesson that we see over here in the sending of the spies by Yoshua is the fact that Yoshua saw a need to send spies. Now this may uh, be, be uh, questionable to some people out there because we already have a haftacha, we have a promise by God that the land of Israel would be given over to the Jewish people. Why then would, you, would Joshua have to go through uh, the playing of sending out spies when in fact everyone knows that the land of Israel will be given over to the Jews? Why go through that entire hassle of sending out spies? But the truth is, is that we have to do what we have to do, and God does what he has to do. For instance, we have to work through the natural means of this world. We have to gather the army. In spite of the fact that we know that the land will be given, it was promised us, we still have to go out and to fight the battles with everything at our means, the best weapons that we have. 
the best army that we have in order for this to be fulfilled and knowing that God will be behind us in order to make this happen over here. For instance, when a person, God forbid, is sick, he doesn't sit around and just read Perak Tehillim, read from the book of Psalms saying, God, you know, make me well. No, that's not going to make him well. He's got to go out. He's got to find a doctor. He's got to get to the best doctor that he can in order to be healed. He's got to take the medicines that are given to him in order to be healed. Only a fool would just stay home and just and pray to God and say, God, heal me, because that's not going to happen. So in spite of the fact that once a person is healed by going to the doctor and taking the medicines, we know that God was behind this entire operation and made this person well. So too with us today. We can't just sit back and say, well, God is going to be with us and protect us. No, we have to go out with all our means in order to make it happen. And only then does God take over and protect us and make us victorious. The same is true over here, that Yeshua goes through the process of the natural order of things. He sends out spies in order to make this happen and the conquering of Eretz Israel a reality for the Jewish people. Because without the army, without the spies going out, it's just not going to happen. And here Rachav changes around her life and she protects the two spies who come to her. She hides them from the king's men who go out throughout the land in order to search for the spies, being that they've heard that Yoshua has spent, uh, sent spies to them. And uh, she puts them up, she hides them, and she makes them uh, promise that when they do enter into the land of Eretz Israel to conquer Jericho, her family and herself would be saved. And the spies uh, do kindness with her and her family, and they say, yes, we will save you as long as you stay in your house. And as a sign, you put out a scarlet uh, rope that went out from the window, because as the chapter tells us over here, she lived by the wall of the city. And the spies tell her that as long as that rope is out there, everyone in her house will be saved, just as you have done kindness with... with uh, with us, so too we will do kindness with you. We see that that's the trend of anyone who's coming to the Jewish people. The Jewish people are a kind people. They're always doing a chesed for one another. Someone who has this trait of kindness is someone who can enter and be with the Jewish people. The cruelty trait is something that we find by the nations of the world. In any case, uh, an interesting thought over here is that with this same scarlet rope that came down, uh, Rachav used to uh, send out her uh, the people who came to do business with her, so to speak, and uh, they used to escape, so to speak, by going out this rope from her window and out of town so people wouldn't see who her clients were. Uh, with that same rope that she had sinned with, now she is doing chesed, she is doing a mitzvah with, by saving the two spies who have come to see the land of Eretz Israel. So that's an interesting thing. She's turning everything around with her own life, and not only with her own life, but also with the means that she used to sin, she is now using that for a mitzvah, for a good deed. And the spies swear to her, and they stay up there, and then she releases them, they let them down through the rope, and they go, and she says to them, go to the mountain, least the pursuers meet you, and hide yourself there for three days, and then you will be free. You will be safe. And the soldiers' men uh, come back, and they do not find the two spies. And the two spies return to the camp of Israel before Yoshua ben Nun, and they report to him exactly what is going on over here. And the, the he tells them that the the heart of the of the people have just melted before the Jewish people. And they say to Yoshua, "For the Lord has delivered into our hands all of the land." And how do they know that? And all the inhabitants of the country have melted away before us. So once they saw that the, the people were frightened of the Jewish people, uh, they, they knew they knew that they would be not be able to stand up against the mighty army of Yeshua and fight against us. So that was a very important point over here. Uh, Chazal tells us in the Midrash that as long as Israel does God's will, the nations are in awe of them. As long as we do what we have to do, we continue to do uh, God's, we keep God's Torah, we do the commandments, no nation will be able to stand up against us. Once we stop doing that and we remove the yoke of Torah from amongst us, that's when our troubles come. But as long as we go in the right direction and do what God wants us to do, then all the, our enemies will just melt before us. They'll be totally frightened of us, as was the case over here with the city of Jericho. 
That concludes Chapter 2. Thanks for being with us. I'm Levi Chazan, coming to you from Yeshiva, Rayon Hiyudi. Until next time. Until next time.